I'm Sider Sutras at the Western Energy Summit in Mountain View, California. And joining me now is Mike Davis, who is Associate Laboratory Director for Energy and Environment with the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Mike, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Tom. Uh, during one of our earlier panels today, you asked a very poignant question about, as you put it, the three-legged stool and the elements of science and technology, policy and capital, the fact that they need to come together to really be effective as you move forward in innovation and development. Indeed, and, and I think uh, as we really try and, and deal with the large, large challenges of energy and environment. The idea that we can, we can solve these problems, the, the motivation to solve them, I think clearly brings into focus the fact that you need those three spheres working more effectively together, mm -hmm. faster together than we've ever had them work before. Mm -hmm. Which of those spheres is the most advanced in your mind at this point? I actually think in many cases that we have more technology available to us mm -hmm. than the markets are uptaking. And why might that be? Uh, in some cases, people describe energy efficiency as low-hanging fruit, as right. an example. Well, if it's fruit, that means the technology is there. <laughs> and certainly, there's venture capital and other capital that's ready to move into markets. In many cases, it's business models or some aspect of policy or regulation that probably doesn't provide the right incentives or maybe even disincentives mm -hmm. for the kind of behavior you would expect in terms of, of logical, more efficient behavior. If the capital markets, Mike, are beginning to move once again, uh, does that lead you to conclude that policy is what's lagging right now from your perspective at International Laboratories? Well, I, I do think that, that uh, again, all three have to be understood collectively. And I do think that policy now is beginning to move forward again. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Um, but I think it has to be policy once again informed by the science and technology, by the capital markets, and, and ultimately by the outcome we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Now, when those are in sync, we make progress. I think one of the reasons that we don't make progress, and I think this is inherent as well, is that we're a lot better at advancing special interests than we are at advancing special outcomes. So a problem indigenous to Washington, D.C. Well, indigenous to our system, not just Washington. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you think about it, there's, there's lobbyists, lots of lobbyists for special interests, and special interests are important. Who are the lobbyists for special outcomes? Mm -hmm. and, and while we arbitrate among various interests, until we really step back, particularly in energy and environment, and I think that's the point of leadership, and get very, very clear about the outcomes we need, and then to some extent get out of the prescriptive business of trying to choose winners and losers, but just stay focused on the outcome and, and provide the leadership to those three spheres to stay on the outcome and be persistent and I think we'll continue to, to do less than we actually could be doing. Is that within your mission statement, Mike, at least in your mind, uh, within the synergy of all the national laboratories? Is it your job to, if not pick winners and losers, identify the winners out of all of the options available? Well, I think, once again, the, the process of, of picking, and I think several of the panelists, inherently we do over time mm -hmm. because there, there is a resolution of, of winners and losers. Natural selection to some degree. That's right. But I think how you do that is fundamentally important. You, in my view, as long as you do that with, with, with the right outcome in mind, then effectively you're having a competition. Mm -hmm. But it's a competition where everybody can have a shot at the outcome. You don't predetermine the winner. You predetermine the outcome. Uh, reaching deployment at scale, which is one of the topics we talked about today, is that the ultimate goal in your mind in terms of what the national labs are working toward? Well, I think we all have to do that, whether we're a national laboratory or a university. Uh, our energy Or, or, or uh, private capital as well. Absolutely, because the scale of our energy infrastructure and industry, domestically and globally, mm -hmm. is almost unimaginable. So when you, when you think about altering something or changing or improving something that is at that scale, then what you're doing has to be able to somehow accelerate up to that rate and scale. And that's a great big challenge. Uh, our system is, is wonderful in that it's, it's really easy to have aspirations or even expectations about what it should do. It's really hard to get from those aspirations and expectations to actual change. Final question, Mike, a topic we addressed today, uh, whether you compare the current situation to a new Manhattan project or a new Apollo project, uh, the onus is on the national labs to make breakthroughs. Is this an environment for competition internationally or is it an environment for cooperation internationally? Oh, I actually think it winds up, not to split hairs, but it winds up being both. Mm -hmm. 
there are certain issues that are so big and so daunting that it's in our global best interest to try and solve them quickly. And, and that rate will not be achieved by small groups. And, and that rate may not even be achieved by nations working on it. I think some of the issues we have to tackle with respect to emissions really have to be tackled at a global scale. We do not have time to do this individually or in small efforts. Right up against the clock. Mike Davis is with the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Thanks for sharing your insight with us. Thank you. Once again, we are here at the Western Energy Summit in Mountain View, California, just outside of San Jose. I'm Tyler Suters, and you're watching Clean Skies News.